get started. All right, folks, we're back. Another CCNA section. Again, as far as the OSI model, we're still at layer two, right? Um, and we left off on talking about switches, right? Because we're at layer two and that's the primary device for layer two, right? But, you know, one thing that I want to, you know, I want to go ahead and touch on. And if you guys have notes or anything, um, I think this is a big part um, of you guys learning about um, the OSI model switches and, and, and how they function is learning about one of the three you know three of the major three of the major functions of a switch okay so let's go ahead and just jump right in right so you got a switch get it out the box right jaquan you, you'll get your switch out the box you need to go ahead and for your business you need to go ahead and just have multiple ports available for your end users right you plug it in right the switch is has three jobs that it has to do right and let's say you don't have just one switch you have two or three switches that are connected to each other right they have three major jobs. Outside of that, it, it depends on if you want to enable a feature or not, right? The three, the three functions are, right? Deciding when to forward a frame or when, when not to forward a frame based on the destination MAC address, right? So, and we'll take a look at a packet capture and take a look at, you know, a destination MAC address, but, you know, a switch will go ahead, get that frame, right? Because we're not going to call it a packet yet. We're still at layer two, so we call it a frame decides you get the frame and says hey where do i have to send this right and decides whether hey i know where to send it or i'm not going to go ahead and send this uh, frame out um a certain port okay number two right preparing to forward frames by learning mac addresses by examining the source mac address of each frame received by a switch that's a lot of wordplay Jaquan, me you just talked about it right what is this saying Hey, getting ready to go ahead and shoot frames based on the um, source MAC address that the frames, you know, um, were received on, on that switch. And we'll take a look at that on um, the switch and the Wireshark capture, okay? Last but not least, we talked about it briefly, right? Creating a loop-free environment using spanning tree, right? We're going to touch on that shortly, but... Um, but we are going to have a session in the future that's solely um, that's solely dedicated to spanning tree. Okay, I'm going to try to keep this under 30 minutes, 40 minutes, or what have you, because again, we're going to try to fly through this. And of course, um, I always tell you guys, I leave it up to you guys to jump into the details. If you guys have any questions, we can jump into those details. But this, but mostly, you know, high level, minimal details of what you'll need for the CCNA. Okay. So let's go ahead and pop open this lab, right? So we got this lab, right? We're gonna start having fun, right? We have three switches, right? This is Jerquan's business, right? We have switch one, switch two, switch three. He ordered three switches from the system, right? It could be whatever venue. Most, mostly the standards at layer two are um, globally used on every device, right? They, they have the same function, okay? So we have our switches, right? And we have, redundant connections. And let me take my handy dandy pencil out, right? And we talked about this before. It's connected, right? Right, the entire topology is connected, right? It has at least two connections to um, throughout the topology, right? So let's say PC4, right? Let's say PC4 wants to send, you know, a packet out, right? And I'm sorry, a frame out, right? And you could say whatever, guys. It, it's it's perfectly fine. Um, in the in a in the real world production environment, people will know what you mean. For the CTNA, if you plan on taking it, um, you'll definitely have to know the difference. But yeah, packet frame, perfectly fine. So PC4, right? Get back to the story. Sends out a frame. It says, hey, I want to go ahead and shoot this out wherever it needs to go. So I want to get to my destination, right? Switch one will get it, right? And let's say switch one doesn't know the destination where it's supposed to go to, right? What's switch one gonna do? It's gonna go ahead and try to find where this lives. So it's gonna go ahead and scream, hey, where is this destination MAC address, right? And my analogy for screaming is it's doing a broadcast, right? On a switch, which means whatever switch is gonna do a broadcast is shooting out that frame on all its ports, except the, 
except to where it was received on, okay? So what does that mean, right? It'll receive that frame from PC4, and it's gonna go ahead and shoot out that broadcast out all its ports, except for the port that it was received on, okay? So we shot out the broadcast, right? Out these two ports, but then switch three gets it, right? And it's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna shoot out that same broadcast out, out its ports, because again, right? The three major functions of a switch, right? The first two, it has to learn, right? Learn MAC addresses, and it has to decide when, when to forward and not to forward MAC addresses based on the destination MAC address, right? So we're going to go ahead and keep shooting out, sh shooting stuff out based on the first two, right? Then switch two is going to go ahead and get that frame and say, hey, I got I to gotta go ahead and send this broadcast out. Broadcast means I got to shoot it out all ports, except to, you know, um, it, unless I was connected to the host, right? But it's not. So we're going to go ahead and shoot it out, right? Let's go back to that, right? The third major function of a switch, right? And let me go ahead and erase some of this. I made a bit of a mess, right? So that third major function, preparing to forward only one copy of the frame to the destination by creating a loop-free environment with other switches by using spanning tree protocol, right? Right, so the, the one thing, the switch has to make sure it does, there's only one way to get to the destination. It can't be two ways, it can't be three ways or four ways. It needs to only be one way. Why is that, right? Based on the, um, based on this, right? If there's, if there's not only one way to get to it, and let's say our destination was PC6, right? If our destination was PC6, right? Switch one, knows how to get there, right? But switch one is sending it out all of its ports. Switch two is gonna get it, right? And it's gonna forward it to PC6. But switch one sends it to switch three, switch three is gonna say, oh, I know where PC6 is. It's sending it, it's sending it, right? And, and it gets to a point to where, you know, all these frames, all these broadcasts, they're just going in a circle, right? They're going in a circle. They're just sending traffic, 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 right? Because we're not saying, right, just like a traffic light, hey, there's only, you know, on a one-way street, there's only one way to, 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 to get there. There's not two ways, there's not three ways, there's not four ways. There's only one way. And that's what spanning tree does. It makes sure we only have one way to a destination, right? Okay, so, and this only applies when we have redundant links, right? Right, it only applies whenever we have redundant links. Hey, what's going on? Yeah, I see your hand up, what's going on? You can go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, I just wanted to know that since the uh, Switch One is doing a broadcast, right, and mm -hmm. it needs to go to PC6, wouldn't the mm -hmm. Switch Two actually tell, hey, Switch One, I I know this MAC address, and just this, the broadcast would stop? Um. Wouldn't that happen instead, or it, it, it would, it would, right? But what else is Switch One going to do on a broadcast, right? Let's go ahead and take out the pencil again. With my job, it is going to send it, right? And then all the Switch Two does is going to go ahead and just forwarding those frames, right? So it doesn't do any traffic policies or firewalling, right? It's going to say, "Hey, are we on the same broadcast? I mean, I'm just going to forward this out all my ports." I get a response, boom, hey, I get a response, the, ho the host sends something back, right? But what we gotta take an account of is the switch doing its three major functions. It's also gonna send that broadcast out another port. Then switch three is gonna do the same thing because it has to do its job. Then switch three is gonna do the same thing because it can also get to PC6, right? So it's gonna do its job, right? And so what's gonna happen here, right? Let me use another color. What's gonna happen is these frames starting at switch three to switch one, it's just gonna keep going and 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 going until the whole topology shuts down. Why? Because the switch only has three major functions. It can't. It's not a firewall. It doesn't have ACOs, 
It doesn't say, hey, you can't go there. No, it's just forwarding frames. Does that make sense? So it doesn't communicate with the other switches and say, hey, I'm, I know this MAC address. Don't send anymore. It, it just sends. It, it will. It will communicate, right? Using um, frames called BPDUs. But it's not gonna it's not gonna say um, what lives what lives on my switch. What's gonna happen is right these links. It's gonna say, hey, we're connected in the same we're connected in the same house, right? We're connected in the same house. You can send it. I'm gonna shoot it out all my ports. If I get a response, I know where to shoot it back out because that frame that I received, where I received the frame, right? Let me go ahead and erase all this. So what's going to happen is switch one is going to shoot it out to switch two. Switch two is going to record the MAC address of switch one, right? Because that came from switch, that came from PC4, right? So PC4 knows that it came in right here. So it's going to record that, right? So that port is marked and say, hey, you know, the MAC address for PC4 is maybe AA. Cool. I know where AA lives, right? Which one is going to send that broadcast out all ports, right? And it's going to go ahead and shoot that frame. Cool. Now, switch two knows how to get to AA, right? And knows where to shoot it up. It knows to shoot it up to, sw to switch one, right? And then switch two is going to go ahead and send that broadcast out. It's going to get the PC6 successfully. But again, switch one is going to also shoot the broadcast out the other ports as well, right? And so when that happens, right, it's going to shoot that same message out. And so switch three is going to say, hey, to get to PC4 AA, I know it's this port, right? And then the response, right? The response is it's going to go ahead and try to shoot a broadcast out all out of all of its ports, right? And the response is going to come from PC6 because switch two is going to say, hey, I got to respond to the broadcast message from switch three, right? From AA going to PC6, which is BB, right? We're going to call it BB. Switch two is going to say, hey, cool. The source came from switch three. I need to go ahead and send it there, right? So without spanning tree, all it's doing is just moving traffic. That's it, right? It's not saying, you know, where it came. It's not saying, hey, I only can send it here because this is where it came from. No, it's not, you know, I can't, and I can't send it that way. No, it's going to go ahead and see a, see a frame, right? Hey, this is the source. This is the port it came from. Cool. All right, I'm going to go ahead and, and sh you know, shoot a broadcast out all those ports that I know where to send it back to, right? But if I get something from one source on a certain port, I'm going to shoot it out you know, to where it needs to, and whenever it's come back, I know where I need to send it back, right? So for, if it's receiving messages from switch one and switch three, it's gonna do its job. It's not gonna, it's not gonna be prejudiced. It's gonna say, hey, you guys send it to me, I'm gonna send it right back. Switch three is gonna do the same thing, right? So without spanning tree, right? All of this is getting sent out. And so finally, right? Switch two and switch three is sending these messages back to switch one. Switch one is like, hold up. Now I gotta send it back to PC6. I gotta send it back to BB. So now it's doing it again and again and again and again. And PC6 doesn't know what to do. It doesn't know how, where to send it. And switch two is getting confused. Switch three is getting confused because it's sending out uh, unnecessary broadcasts all over the place. Right? And so all these switch messages along with frames that are going around the topology, right? It's just getting muddied up and muddied up and muddied up, right? And it's saying, oh my God, I can't think no more. What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? There's not just one way to get to PC4 to PC6 because of no spanning tree, right? And so now I have a broadcast storm. Okay. Okay. So with, so with spanning tree, right? And we're gonna keep following this. Um, and I'm glad you asked this question. With spanning tree, we would do this. Where's my pencil? There we go. Spanning tree, we're going to do this, right? We would have one switch 
root switch, right? Of the two switches, they get in a shout match and they're sending those message that, messages that you were talking about, right? They send those messages called BTDUs between each other and say, hey, who has a better, you know, who has a better cost to get to the root switch, right? Which port on my switch needs to, you know, has a better cost. Cool. I'm going to go ahead and mark it. And I know which one is my quote unquote root port. This is my root port. This is my root port, right? And so, because all the, because this port on the root switch is shooting out, it's forwarding out of all its ports. But with spanning tree, like I said, the goal is it needs to have one way flow of traffic. It can't be two ways or three ways, right? Just need to have one way, right? And so, what happens at the last piece is, Right here, we, we have two ports unaccounted for, right? And these are on, on non-root switches. We need to say, hmm, we're gonna go ahead and forward here, right? And maybe block here, okay? So with that being said, right? All right, let me get a new color. Uh, yeah, that's fine, right? So with that being said, we got our port that we're blocking on with the red circle, right? So if we send that message out, right? PC4 is trying to communicate with PC6. We send it out, which all these switches are gonna do its job. It's gonna go ahead and shoot it out all, all ports. Same thing with switch three, right? But switch two is not gonna receive it because it's blocking. So the only way to get to PC6 from switch three standpoint is through switch one, go down to switch two, and et cetera. The only way to get, get to PC5 through switch two, uh, from switch two is to go through switch one and go to switch five. Only way to get to PC4 from switch three, go up to switch one. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, okay, cool, 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 cool. Good question, by the way. Didn't want to jump at spanning tree just, just yet, but good question, right? So, I saw this. So, right? So our switches, right? They're forwarding these frames and they're doing these elections, right? And these elections happen as soon as the switch turns on, right? And what they're doing is they're saying, hey, just like if you're playing basketball or, you know, at the court or what have you, everybody thinks they're the best on the court, right? They think they're Michael Jordan, right? And so that's typically what these switches are doing. They're going to broadcast and say, I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm the best, right? But just like Athena was asking about, there are messages that are sent between these switches called um, BPDU. Right, these are bridge protocol data units, right? And these are frames that are sent that are sharing information about each switch, right? And it's you know, and um, it's called it, you know, it's going ahead and sharing within that BPDU, it's sharing what with it, what they call a bridge ID, okay? And let's take a look at that. Give me one second, and so I'll go ahead and pull that up. We're going to take a look at the Wireshark capture, right? So we can take a look at what this, um. BPDU looks like. Let me go ahead and pull this up. Okay. Oh, that's my port I'm blocking on. Let me do this one. There we go. Okay, there we go. All right, first thing, right? And so, right, we got our BPDU, right? That is sent out protocol to use as STP, right? And so our BPDU is being sent out, right? And the bridge ID, right? What is it, what's sent there? That bridge ID is a bridge identifier. Um, is a real term for it. It's sending the MAC address of that switch, right? The, the default MAC address of the switch the VLAN, right, for um, 
for the switch, right? That's going ahead and advertising um, its information, right? And the default cost, right? Of spanning tree for that switch, right? Every switch by default, it has a cost of 32,768. Every switch, unless you modify it, right? Um, it has that default value of 32,768. Now, how can we tell if, how can we tell if, you know, if certain switches, um, have a different uh, bridge ID, right? And how can we, how can switches tell which one is better or not, right? So the bridge ID is combined with, you know, of course, this value, right? 32,768, along with the VLAN number, right? Along with the MAC address, right? So if we have a value of 32,768, right? Plus the VLAN number, which is one. So that'll be 32,769. If, if we don't modify anything on the switch, right, modify VLAN numbers or what have you, we have to look at the MAC address numbers, right? So looking at the MAC address numbers, we see the switch, switch one has a MAC address of 50.0.0.1.0.0, right? And if we go back to the topology, right, let's say switch two has 02 and 03, right? How the root switch is chosen is based on the lowest, right, the lowest value. Layer two is always lower, layer three is always higher. Remember that. So it's gonna choose and say who has the lower? Cool, perfect. Cool. Which one has the lower? We're gonna go ahead and choose our king. Which one is our king? Right? And so that that's what it's gonna do. Then the other two, we're not done yet, right? It's gonna go ahead and have to select what the port is gonna do, right? And typically a root switch is gonna forward out all of its ports, right? Because it needs to be available to everybody. Right, all of the switches, host, what have you, right? Because it's been chosen as the king. But now, you know, that king has to interact with everybody else. So it's going to go ahead and we're going to have our subordinates, right? Right? We're going to have our, our non root switches. But we need to go ahead and, and identify on these switches how do I, what's the fastest way to talk to the king? Right? And there's different factors or what have you, but this is what the switch is going to do. Like Athena was asking, it's going to go ahead and send messages. Those BPDUs we just looked at, it's going to send those messages back and forth. Look at the bridge ID. They're going to send it between each other and say, hmm, oh, this is the faster way. Here's this port role and port state. We're forwarding, and it's, you know, it's my root port. Now, what's left to do? I need to choose what I'm going to do on this one, right? So I have a loop-free topology. I'm going to go ahead and block on this, and I'm going to go ahead and forward on this. Well, yeah, forward on this. Boom. I have a loop-free topology, okay? And so once that's created, right, now the switch can perform its primary three functions. It can start going ahead and, and forwarding, um, forwarding frames, right, based on the destination MAC address, learning frames based on the source MAC address, and of course, creating a loop free topology using spanning tree. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. And so that's typically it, right? For the three major functions of the switch. Again, we'll go deep into spanning tree and I'll have a fun exercise. Um, I don't wanna hold you guys up for too long. Um, any questions before we you know, wrap it up and, and end this session? No, no questions. I'll have any All right, guys. All right, guys. I'll go ahead and close it up. You guys have a great night and happy Thanksgiving. All right. Thanks. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks for the run through. No problem. All right, guys. Later.